Hi everyone! Today we're going to do a read aloud on a nonfiction book. Now we went over a lot this year about nonfiction, but I want you to think for a couple seconds in your head what is the difference between nonfiction and fiction? That's right! Nonfiction is a book that tells you facts, and a fiction book is a book that is about opinions or can be stories. So this nonfiction book today is hopefully going to teach us. Also, nonfiction books have text features. Now text features can include titles, they can also include diagrams, they can also include real pictures with captions. And now these captions will point to things and tell you what different things are on the picture. So today we're going to read Incredible Insects. And the reason I chose this book is because I've been going on a lot of hikes and walks outside or maybe just spending time in my tiny backyard. And I've been seeing so many different types of insects. So I thought this would be a great book to read. So this is called Incredible Insects, and it's by Zoe Barnes. Here is the table of contents. So this tells us what we're going to learn about in the book today. So chapter one says, meet the insects. And when you're reading a table of contents, it also tells you the page number where you can find that chapter. So if you're looking through quickly and you just want to meet the insects but you don't want to do any other things, you can just turn quickly to page four. So chapter one says meet the insects, page four. Chapter two says insect skills, page eight. And chapter three says amazing insects, page 12. Oh, it looks like we have a little caption at the bottom right here. It says glossary and comprehension questions page 16. That means on page 16 is where you can find the glossary. What does the glossary tell us again? That's right, the glossary tells us the definition of certain words. And then the comprehension questions is just a fun little part of the book that the author wanted to include to ask you questions about what you're reading. Okay, let's get going. Chapter 1, Meet the Insect. Insects may be tiny, but take a closer look. You will see that they are incredible. Right here, we have a short horn grasshopper. Why do you think that that is called a short horn grasshopper? I'll give you a closer look. That's right, it might be because he has shorter horns right here. Insect parts. What makes an insect an insect? All insects have three body parts, head, thorax, and abdomen. They also have six legs and two antennae. Let's look at the insect parts up here. So remember I said they have three body parts. They have their head, they have their thorax, which is in between their head and the next body part, which is an abdomen. This is their abdomen. We also have a head and an abdomen. What do you think that our thorax would be? That's right, it might be our neck or our chest. So we also know that the insects have six legs. So let's count the legs. We have one, two, three, I'll let you count the rest. Six legs. And we also know that it has two antennae. Now antennae are these things that stick out of the head. And antennae often help the bug feel. It's like another foot. Okay, we have a fast fact right here. Let's see what it says. Spiders are not insects because they have eight legs. Give me a thumbs up if you knew that spiders had eight legs and that they weren't an insect. I didn't. That's a brand new fact for me. I thought spiders were insects. And this insect up here that we just looked at is called a cardinal beetle. All 
All insects have a hard covering called an exoskeleton. Now this word is bolded. Does anyone remember why a word would be bolded? Well, often words that are bolded might be in the glossary. So let's go find out what an exoskeleton is. I'm going to turn back to the glossary. And there we have it, right here, in alphabetical order. It says exoskeleton, hard outer shell or covering. Okay, I'm gonna go back to that page. So it said all insects have a hard covering called an exoskeleton. This protects their soft insides. So up here we have a Anyone guess? It's a ladybug. And our caption points to its exoskeleton that protects their insides. What is our fast fact? It says most insects have wings for flying. Now give me a quick connection if you've seen a ladybug out in the wild since you've been home. I have. I actually saw two yesterday when I was sitting on my hammock in my backyard. It was really exciting. Okay, insects are the most common kind of creature on Earth. 90% of the world's animals are insects. Let's learn about them. So here we are, the world's animals. This is called a graph. In our graph, it says 10% other animals. What kind of other animals do you think fill up that 10%? That's right. Bears, tigers, lions, alligators, many other different animals, but they only fill up 10% of the other animals other than insects that make up 90%. So we have a beetle. We have a grasshopper. We have an ant. We have a honeybee, we have a moth, a dragonfly, and a beautiful butterfly. These are just some of the insects you might find outside. Chapter 2, Insect Skills. Insects are very adaptable. Oh, here we go with another bolded word. Now this time, instead of going to the glossary, I'm gonna keep reading and see if the text tells me what adaptable means. Let's see. Insects are very adaptable. They live in hot places and cold places. They live in trees and on the ground. Some even live in the water. Now, did that give me the definition of adaptable? I think so. It told us that insects can live wherever because their body can change based off of where they live. So right here looks like an adaptable insect. It's called a diving beetle. Okay, next page we have a fast fact at the top. Let's read it. Many insects taste with their feet. Hmm. Interesting. Now if insects have, how many legs do they have again? Six legs. So if insects have six legs, that means that they can taste with all six of their feet. So right here we have a horse fly, and our caption points to its two eyes. And right here we have a cardidid, and it point, points to its ears. Its ears are look, look like they're on their elbows of the leg. Let's read about them. Insects have keen senses that are different from other animals. The eyes of a horsefly have thousands of tiny lenses. The ears of a katydid are on its legs. I want you to imagine for a second what it would be like if your ears were on your legs or on your arms. If your ear was on your knee or on your elbow. That would be so weird. Many insects are social. 
They live and work together in large groups called colonies. One hive can have 80,000 bees. Right up here we have a honey beehive. Now see if you can count how many bees are in that beehive. Did you count 80,000? There are even insects that migrate. Monarch butterflies travel to warmer places in the fall. They return to cooler places in the spring. Here's a beautiful picture of all of these monarch butterflies. And then there's also a map that shows monarch migration map. It shows how the monarch butterflies travel from Canada down to California, and then they also travel from different parts of the United States down to Mexico. Those are called their migration patterns. A migration pattern is kind of like moving. So these monarch butterflies move a lot from winter to spring and spring to summer so that they can stay in warm places longer. Chapter 3, Amazing Insects. Butterflies are beautiful and some are very big. This one has a wingspan of nearly half a foot. Now, let's look. The wingspan is from one wing to the other side of the wing. That's its wingspan. That's how long the wingspan is. And they say that it can be nearly half a foot. So I want everyone to look at their foot right now and look how big it is and think it can be that big. And then, after this read aloud, I want you to go look at your mom or your dad or your grandmother or grandpa's foot, any adult in your ha house, and I want you to look at their foot and think a butterfly's wingspan could be half an adult's foot. Now this butterfly is called a green birdwig butterfly. Can anyone guess why it's called a green birdwig butterfly? Yep, because it's green. Okay, ants are super strong. They can cart things that are 50 times their own weight. That would be like you carrying an entire car. These are called leaf cutter ants. And I have a close up. It says leaf cutter ants have powerful jaws for tearing leaves. Everyone put two fingers on your jaw and I want you to bite like you're biting into a big sandwich. So the jaws on a leaf cutter are for tearing these leaves. If you look at these leaves up there, some of them are broken. So those ants went around and tore those leaves and now they're carrying them back to shelter to feed their family. Termites can live in a long, can live a long, long time. Some termite queens live for 50 years. Up here we have a picture. This is a termite queen. And it says, this is a termite worker. So if you see the queen up here, this long thing is the whole termite queen and all these little guys around them are the termite workers. Here's our fast fact. It says termites can build homes that are as tall as houses. Look at that termite home. Grasshoppers are great jumpers. They can leap 20 times the length of their own bodies. Hey, come back here. Here's a grasshopper and they were both sitting on that leaf together, maybe hanging out, and then one just sprung away. Now, our fast fact says there are more than one million different kinds of insects on the planet. One million. Oh, we're already at the end. So right back in the back of any nonfiction book should always be a glossary. Now the glossary tells us the meaning of each of the words that were bolded throughout the book. 
So we have adaptable, antenna, cart, colony, exoskeleton, keen, lens, and social. Now I want you to think for a moment, have you seen any of these insects out in the wild? Or have you maybe even seen them in your home or in your backyard? I know that I shared a story of me seeing a ladybug on my hammock yesterday, two ladybugs, and I was so excited. And I also was able to see a grasshopper on my walk the other day. So at the end, there's two comprehension questions. While you're thinking of those animals that you've seen, either outside or around your house, I'm gonna ask you these comprehension questions. Now, if you have a paper and pencil, this would be a great time to grab it and you can write down the answer to your questions and then send them in a picture message to Ms. Brandenburg. The first comprehension question. Can you explain what makes an insect an insect? I'll read it again. Can you explain what makes an insect an insect? So after reading this book, do you remember the first chapter where it says, meet the insects, it told us a little bit about facts about insects that make them special. I'll give you a hint. Spiders are not insects because they have eight legs. Insects only have six legs. Good job. Okay, comprehension question number two. Can you name five different kinds of insects. Can you name five different kinds of insects? So write down on your paper right now, five different kinds of insects that you can think of. I know we learned about eight or 10 in this book, so that should give you a head start. I'll give you my first insect that I'm gonna write down, and it's a butterfly. Okay, I'll give you about 20 more seconds to answer that second question. Again, number one said, can you explain what makes an insect an insect? And number two said, can you name five kinds of insects? Finally, number three says, which insect in this book is your favorite? Draw a picture of it. So let's review the insects that we looked at in this book. We looked at a grasshopper, a beetle, a ladybug. We looked at another beetle. We looked at a ho housefly, horsefly, I'm sorry, a horsefly. But I also see a lot of houseflies in my house and that would also be considered an insect. We also saw that Katie did this weird looking insect. We saw bees and butterflies. And we saw ants. And finally, we saw a termite and a grasshopper. So the last question said, which insect in the book is your favorite and why? Draw a picture of it. So I challenge you to answer all three of those questions on a pencil and paper and add a drawing of your favorite insect and send a picture to Miss Brandenburg. Great to see you all today. Have a wonderful day.